If you're looking at upgrading your interior lighting to LED, you gotta watch this video. Here, we're gonna talk about why people upgrade to LED, what's the big deal. We're gonna talk about the different types of bulbs you'll encounter in interior lighting, and we'll talk about which styles of LED bulbs you wanna use and which ones you don't. Then, we're gonna give you tips and tricks on how to do all the installs yourself. I'm Chris, and here at Headlight Revolution, we do a ton of aftermarket lighting upgrades for cars and trucks. We do headlights and light bars, taillights, and interior lights. Interior lights are a big deal because when you get in the vehicle, it dictates the feel and the look of your car or truck. And if you have the old style dingy incandescent light bulbs, like this one or this one, you're really missing out on some cool upgrades that are super easy to do all by yourself. The reason people do LED bulb upgrades is because they want to get rid of this look. They want something brighter or a different color, and you can get both of those things with LED. Another big reason is a lot of older vehicles, these incandescent light bulbs get so hot that they have made the housings and the lenses fragile over time. The right LED bulbs for interior lighting won't have that effect on your plastic pieces. Generally speaking, people do these kind of upgrades because they want brighter light. As you can see, when you put in an LED bulb that's a white color, it's brighter, and it's definitely cooler. This is kind of a 6000K color that has some blue hue in it, but a lot of the bulbs are more of a pure white, or even more blue than this one. You can also change the color to red. I like this because it's a pretty dramatic effect, and it helps keep your night vision and allows you to see better in the dark. Blue. You can do about any color you want, including green. You can even do yellow. Once you've decided which color LED light you want to go with, then it's time to pick out a bulb. Some of them are either too big or just too bright to even be used as an LED bulb. Take, for example, the new Ultra Series from GTR Lighting. These two Ultra Series bulbs would technically fit all the same applications as any other T10 bulb, but they might be too bright for most people's comfort. That thing is like a reverse light. It might actually fit in your dome light, but is that what you want? Philips and Osram make these frosted lens 360 degree LED bulbs, and they're not very bright. They're very high quality, the color is almost perfect, but some people want a little more performance out of their LED bulbs. If we go with the Osram one, that is extremely similar, is a little bit brighter than the Philips bulb, still a beautiful color, but they could be even brighter. Now Acme also makes a frosted diffuser bulb that's really similar to Philips and Osram. And it's even brighter yet, but we can still go further. If you take the Carbide Series T10 bulb from GTR Lighting, it might actually be too bright. Now that is an intense light. If you like scorchingly bright lights in your interior, this would be a great option. But a lot of times, this one's reserved for cargo lights, license plate, and reverse lights. A really popular option would be the Crystal Lens T10 from GTR Lighting. It's a good mix of better LED cool white color, brightness, and spread. So how do you pick a bulb for your application? The most common LED bulb that you're going to be seeing for sale is a T10. That's also called a 194 or a 168. Now, they also come in slightly bigger sizes. These are all very similar incandescent light bulbs that you're gonna find throughout your vehicle. You can see that there's three different sized globes, but on the back, they've all got the same mini wedge base. They're all exactly identical, and in the LED aftermarket, this is called a T10 or a T15. 
The only difference between 10 and 15 is how big the LED portion is. So, when you find a 194 or a 168 or a T10 or a T15, any of these T10 style bulbs are gonna work. What you have to look out for is how bright do you want them to be? How dim do you want them to be? What colors do you want? And which direction are the LEDs facing? For example, if your, LED, if your original incandescent bulb is in your housing facing sideways and it's shining light down because the filament creates light on all sides, you probably don't want an LED bulb that only faces sideways. LEDs are directional. The light is only gonna be going this way. We need something that'll face down, but in this orientation. There's a few different options for that. Number one is a multi-sided SMD bulb like this. The five LED T10 from GTR Lighting is an oldie but a goodie. You've got the new Reflex series, which is packed full of tons of high power LED chips that's gonna give you light in all directions. Or you have the twist style LED bulb from GTR Lighting. You can see if we line up the bases, the twist style is facing this way, but it's a twist bulb. You can actually change the orientation of the LEDs without changing how it's plugged in. So that's a really cool product in case you want to uh, have something that's directionally facing one way. The other thing you're gonna run into is a lot of these T10 or T15 bulbs are simply gonna be too large for your interior housing. This Lightning Series T15 from GTR Lighting is simply too big for most dome lights. Same goes for this Acme 9, 921 bulb. This GTR Lighting Ultra Series T15 would plug in, but it's probably gonna to be too big. So you need to decide what's important to you. What color do you want? How are they supposed to be facing or shining? And which ones are actually even gonna fit? The second most popular bulb you're gonna find in any interior of any vehicle is called a festoon. This little glass bulb that looks like a car stereo fuse is called a festoon bulb. It's a glass tube with a wire wound inside to create light, and on the outside are a couple metal clamps. It fits in a socket like this one. You have two open clamps on each side that hold positive and negative voltage, and when you put the bulb into the clamps, it illuminates. These get very hot, they draw a fair amount of power, and they're pretty easy to break. When we look at options for LED bulbs, you wanna go with a lot of the same characteristics that we talked about with the T10s. What colors do you want? How bright do you want them to be? And are they going to fit? Generally speaking, all you need is something like this Ultra Series Festoon from GTR Lighting. CAN bus, so they work in almost any application. They're small, they have good heat dissipation, and they're super bright. Look at what happens when I compare this single LED bulb to this single Festoon bulb. That is a massive increase in power, and it looks way cooler. Not to mention, if you wanted a different color, you just swap it out for something else. These bulbs are totally plug and play. Take out your old festoon bulbs, figure out what size they are, and then pick a corresponding LED bulb. There's lots to choose from. If you find something that looks like this, it's an old style chip on board festoon. Um, these are not as reliable as the newer SMD LEDs, like the Ultra Series, but it's good that they have a heat sink on the back because that means that they're gonna be plenty bright and they require some type of heat dissipation. You have several different sizes. You've got something like this one, a 36 millimeter. You've got a slightly smaller, maybe a 31 millimeter, and you have a bigger one, like 42. So there's three standard sizes. Now there's some wiggle room. A 32 millimeter LED might fit a 30 mil to 33 millimeter. A 42 millimeter LED festoon might fit a 41 to 44 millimeter application. So don't let those numbers hang you up. Also, these original incandescent festoon bulbs have a ton of different part numbers, like 212-1 and all kinds of different variants that dictate 
the color, the size, and the wattage of the bulb. But in the end, they're all replaced by one of the standard size LED bulbs. Sometimes you get a festoon bulb that has loops on the end. The idea is, generally speaking, the festoon bulb is held in by clamps, like this. Sometimes they're not held in by clamps, and the fixture has hooks on the outside. And this little loop on the top of the bulb clamps into that hook. Now, if you're using a traditional LED festoon like this, there's nowhere for the hook to attach. So we need a special rigid loop festoon. These are made exactly for that purpose. Similar in shape and style to a regular festoon bulb, but they have loops on the end to hold onto that hook assembly. So if your festoon has rigid loops on top, and that's what holds it in place on your car, you also need the matching rigid loop LED festoon. The other types of bulbs that you're going to find in interiors are a little bit more obscure. A lot of vehicles don't even use these at all, and those are the H6 or BA9S, also referred to as a mini bayonet style bulb. You can see it's got the single point on the bottom and then two little tabs on the side and it's held in by a spring. You push it into the socket, a spring pushes back and you twist it into place. Those little nubs lock it in. There are a few LED bulb options out there on the market that replace this type of bulb. And they have the exact same type of mini bayonet spring base as the original. You also might run into a little tiny bulb called a T5. Here's two variants. As you can see, they're extremely similar. One is bigger than the other, and they resemble a T10. But as you can see, there's a major difference in size. The T10 mini wedge is significantly larger than the T5 mini wedge base. So you need to have a T5 LED bulb to replace this style. These are also commonly called a number 74, and you need a very small LED T5 to go along with it. Now, just like the other bulbs, sometimes they're in a socket like this, sometimes they're in a socket like this. So you need to pick out the right LED bulb for each application. If your LED bulb is this way, letting up a gauge cluster, you're going to want to use an LED with multiple sides on it, like this 3LED T5 from GTR Lighting. However, if your T5 bulb is facing down, you can use the more powerful single LED T5. In just a second, we're going to actually show you some installs on a vehicle, but first, I want to show you some of the tools that we actually use here at Headlight Revolution. This is your typical dome light housing. We got a couple incandescent light bulbs, and to get at them, we have to pop these covers off, which you can do pretty easily in the vehicle with the right tools. Now, a lot of people have something like this in their arsenal. It's a really heavy duty pry bar or scraper. This is too much. You don't need something so monstrous. This one is like your grandpa's old paint scraper. This is actually wrong too. It's too flimsy. You need something in the middle of those, and we don't like all these sharp edges. Sometimes a pick tool set can come in handy, but you run the risk of damaging the plastic around the lenses. Let me show you why. The tip of the pick is small enough to fit in the crack between the housing and the lens, so you get it in there, but then once you pry on it, it leaves these big divots in the side of the plastic. If you're doing this on a customer's vehicle, now you owe them a new dome light housing. So we're not going to use a pick for pulling lenses off. They make specific pry tools for this type of job. Here's one that's maybe also a little bit too big for this. We really need something designed to fit in between the crevice, between the lens and the housing. And that's why my favorite one to use is the Ultimate Pry Tool from 12 Volt Tools, 12vtools.com. This thing's amazing because it's the perfect blend of thin metal and it's stiff enough that it doesn't bend 
and it's wide enough that it doesn't create gouges and divots in your plastic. It can go right between the plastic housing and the lens and pop up. So, this is a great pry tool if you're doing a lot of this kind of work. I highly recommend you getting one. When you get the lens off, a lot of the times you need to pull the bulb out with the pliers. Like these 194 bulbs, for example, you might have to get in there with the pliers. A lot of times your fingers won't fit. A lot of times the bulb is hot because it's been on and having a pliers handy is just the way to do it. Now, it's a little tricky because glass light bulbs are smooth and you need some friction to use the pliers to grab the bulb out. But if with, with enough practice and persistence, you can do it. The other thing that you might want to use that we're actually going to use on our demo vehicle today is a trim tool kit. This thing comes with a whole bunch of different types of tools that allow you to work on about any vehicle you come across. You have a flexible metal pry tool, a scraper style, more stiff pry tool, and then a different array of plastic scratch resistant pry tools, different shapes, sizes, lengths, and curvatures to fit different applications. Something like a vanity light install like this one, you might have glass or other fragile materials here. So, I mean, if I put my metal um, pry tool in there, I don't like that. I feel like I'm gonna damage the glass. So I'm gonna use some type of a plastic pry tool for this and just sort of work it around until I figure out, you know, where it's gonna release at. I think what's going on here, just by pulling on this, I've got a clip here and here. I'm going to use a slightly stiffer pry tool and pop it off. Now I can use my plastic pry tool again and take the bulb out. To pull this lens off and replace the bulb with an LED, um, it looks like a pretty easy one to get to. I can get my fingernail in there, there's some space. I'm going to use this big flat metal pry tool and you just kind of want to be gentle and take your time. Just it, I got a corner to pop out so we're going to keep going around and keep prying just a little bit Got another one, and then eventually the whole thing should just come out. A lot of times you can put your tools away and just use your fingers and work the lens back and forth like this. You can see it's held on place by three swivel clips. And uh, now that we have the light bulb exposed, I'm gonna use a needle nose pliers to gently grab the bulb and pull it out. That was really easy, but a lot of times it's not that tough because the glass bulb is smooth and the pliers doesn't have anything to grab onto and it's hot. A lot of times you grab it with your finger, you might burn yourself. I'm gonna put that in the cup holder, keep it nice and safe. And then I picked out some LED bulbs for this application. Because the bulbs are facing down, I want a forward facing or down facing LED bulb with no side light. We're gonna use the GTR lighting flat T10 lightning series bulbs. These should be a really good application for this spot. I plug it in and nothing happens. Well that's because a lot of these bulbs are polarity specific. You have to have it positive to positive and negative to negative for it to work right. Pull them out, plug them back in. Now it's good. I'm going to pop this cover back on. Now you can see that the new LED bulb is significantly brighter than the old incandescent bulb and I definitely prefer the new LED coloring. Now inside, a lot of times you'll get something like this that's super flush and there's not a whole lot of space around it. You might think it doesn't even come off. If you want to, you can drop the headliner and get access to the bulbs. But in this case, I think we can get this lens off. And just pry around the edges until you get something to release and just keep going with it. You can twist the tool and the lens comes right off. Again, we use the needle nose to take this 194 out. And we're gonna use the same type of low profile forward facing lightning series bulb that we did in the front. On these door lights down here, usually it's a whole assembly that can just pop out. Um, if you pry on it, you might 
release just the lens, but as you can see, it comes out super easy. Um, you can unplug it here, and then you can work on it a lot easier. You've got a couple tabs that you can pry apart. This one has four, two on each side. And that exposes the bulb. We can use our needle nose pliers again. Pull that T10 bulb out. It's a little bit slippery, hot glass. What I'm gonna use for these are some red bulbs. I've done this in a few of our vehicles. And I think it's a pretty cool effect. You replace a white bulb with a red one and watch what it looks like. Because this one's not up overhead and you really just use it for seeing mud puddles or whatever you're gonna step on getting in and out of the vehicle, this one doesn't have to be super bright. And doing a red door light like this gives a pretty dramatic effect. Now in the cargo area on this particular vehicle, we have one rear overhead dome light. Uh, taking the lens off is gonna be no different than anything else. Just pry around until it comes loose. And then I think some of these, you can actually drop the whole assembly down like the door panels. Some you can, some you can't. Now I'm going to disconnect the power so it's easier to work on. And then I'm gonna use a pry tool and pop the bulb out. That went flying, you gotta make sure you don't lose those things. Now normally you would just do a little replacement LED festoon bulb. It fits in place, just like the original. However, you gotta make sure that your heat sink doesn't touch part of the metal assembly and short the circuit and pop the fuse. Because we have just this one big wide open space, it's a perfect opportunity for using a lightning board or a dome light LED board. That's this little guy. It's a flat panel full of LEDs. So first we're going to take the blue protective film. We want it to be a nice shiny chrome color. And then inside the kit, you have these different adapters. It's not a T10, we don't need that one. It's not a uh, mini bayonet, we don't need that one. But we do need the spring one, like a festoon. So that plugs in here. Then the festoon plugs in to the festoon socket. Now we can plug it back in. Now there's three double-sided 3M tape on the back. You can remove that. You can kind of bunch up your wiring inside here just to get it out of the way and pick a flat surface inside this assembly to put the LED board. When that's done, you can put the cover back on. And the whole thing should just snap back in place. Now we have a super bright, cool looking red LED dome light for the cargo area. 